All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from an unusually wet and rainy San Diego. And today I'm joined by John Ferris, who's CEO at InVision Edge. And John is up in Winnipeg in Canada. How are you doing, John? Hey, hey, John, uh, doing robo. We have still have snow on the ground, believe it or not. But uh, other than that, so we're in a beautiful spot of the country and it's a pleasure <laughs> to be here. Day. Yeah, well, great, and hope you're staying safe, and and uh, and your family and everybody is uh, is doing well right now. Uh, thanks so much. Same to you as well. These are dynamic and interesting times, aren't they? They are. They are. But it looks like there is some light at the end of the tunnel, so that's always good. So here's a good, interesting subject that we're going to talk about today, and that is strategic planning and how it can help accelerate growth within your organization. And how simple it can be to get your first plan created. Because I think that's I think that's the problem with strategic planning. I think normally when you mention strategic planning, like people break out into a cold sweat because they don't really know how to do it. And they've done it, maybe they've done it one way one year, another way another year, or they've done it differently in different organizations. But it always see there never seems to be any kind of consistency around it. So when you say it can be simple to create your first strategic plan, what do you mean by that? Yeah, well. We believe that strategic planning, just like anything in our business, is a process. It's a system. It's something that we can be taught. It can be learned. And if you follow the system, the process, and the methodology, then you can get consistent execution. So it's basically been developed over my years in business. I've been in, worked in large companies for quite a few years. Started my own company about seven years ago, really distilling down the key elements of strategic planning so that anybody can do it. And, um, you know, in the old days, we used to have these great, off-site strategy sessions and you'd sure. rah, 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 and you'd have everyone together and you'd leave after a day or two in this nice you know, hotel or wherever it might be and nothing would happen, right? You, nothing mm -hmm. would be executed. You'd pull it out a year later and you'd have a beautiful yeah. binder with fancy tabs and nice PowerPoints, but absolutely nothing would happen. Uh, so, I mean, those days are gone. I mean, things are changing so rapidly. If we're not focusing on quick cycles of a strategy and focusing on obsessing on the execution of the strategy, then it's really pointless. So the course of the experience that I've had really distilled it down to five key steps to take your strategy, execute it, launch it, communicate it, and uh, then continue the whole cycle of, of strategic planning over and over again. So that's been, been my obsession is to democratize strategy so that it can be simple as possible and get to executing your strategy as soon as possible. And to your point, I mean, the way things are changing nowadays, I mean, look, if you had a strategic plan, it doesn't matter how well you were doing it this year, it's uh, just being blown up, right? So, I mean, part of it is that obviously you can't have, as you say, you can't do that strategic plan, put it in a nice binder and say, there we are, That's this is it for the year and we'll come back at the end of the year and review it. It has to be a living, breathing thing, right? Absolutely. I, I always say that strategy is dynamic, not static. It's not mm -hmm. about a static event or a static thing. It's it's dynamic. I mean, things are changing so rapidly today. I mean, years ago when we did strategic planning, we'd often look at 10 years, sometimes 20 yeah. years horizons. Impossible. Um, I mean, the most you can look at is three year horizon given digital transformation, all the changes. And of course, mm -hmm. today with the challenges we're in in the world, the, the strategy horizon is even shorter. It's weeks, For months, sure. quarters, right? Uh, the key is it's dynamic and you have to be so responsive to the outside world and be prepared to pivot and adjust quickly. That's the strategy horizon needs to be continually changing. And you always need to bring it out to review it and focus on what are those new issues in the world, new issues with clients, new issues with your team, with the, the systems in your company, but prepare to pivot and adjust so quickly today. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Okay, so let's dive in a little bit on your five-step process. What, what's what's stage number one? Well, step one, as uh, most would, would probably know, is starting with the why. What's your mm -hmm. reason, your purpose, your, your, your reason to believe? Of course, Simon Sinek is the master of that, starting with why. But, you know, the, again, in the old days, we used to have these beautiful vision, mission statements. They'd be on the wall. No one would have any idea what mm -hmm. they were, couldn't repeat them. Uh, but having a really articulated a why statement, this is why you get up in the morning, this is why you do what you do as an organization, is absolutely critical. And it doesn't take a long time to create it. And it's always evolving to your why can you evolve and it takes time to really find that why. But getting something down, a one liner or a, a sentence that describes who you are, what you do and why you do what you do is absolutely key. So yeah, step one. And, and I just I just I just stop you on that one, because I think it's it's worth uh, underlining that because, you know, most people would say, well, yes, of course, of course, you need a why. 
But to be honest, if you ask a lot of people, you know, what is the why and what you do today? Why do you do what you do? Even personally, why do you do what you do? Very few people can answer that question without a lot of thought. And so it's critical. I mean, that piece is often skipped, the why. And absolutely, it is. But strategies in the context of that why. And so I think it's, it's actually the most critical part of that because it, it really, it's an emotional or visceral connection to who you are and what you do. So as you're communicating with your teams and getting your teams involved in strategy, they need to connect with that why. So that's always step one. And again, it's, it, it does take a while to get to that why and it won't be perfect the first time. That's mm-hmm. why it's dynamic, not static. So as you're going through and your business is evolving and changing, that why can morph and you can get richer clarity over the years as you as you work on that. But step one is always starting with that why. And there's a really quick exercise we do, which is kind of a fun one to kick off our why discussions. It's a, it's a visualization exercise. So we actually get leadership teams together and we talk about, okay, what is your, what is your organization look like five years from now? We're sitting mm-hmm. in this room. What does it look like? What do your clients look like? What's the engagement with your team? What are the products you're doing? And that kind of just gets some free flowing into that a future state. And then you right. take the elements and the themes of that, and then you start crafting a statement that basically brings it down to that why. So step right. one, start with a why. Excellent. And step two? Step two is, uh, this is where they get into the tough stuff too, is uh, confronting reality. So mm-hmm. what's, so you've got your, your why, your purpose, your end state. Uh, now what's your current state? So this is really getting under the covers in your business and really having a good, honest discussion of what's working and what's not working. So we run through a number of exercises. I mean, a classic one would be the SWOT, right? Strengths, yeah. weaknesses, opportunities, mm-hmm. and threats. That's one, t- one tool. A tool, another tool we use today, we do a speed of change assessment. So we take your organization and take a look at outside the walls of your organization, how fast are things changing on a scale of one mm-hmm. to 10. One is really slow, 10 is really fast. So you do that. And most organizations, doesn't matter what industry, there's a very rapid speed of change, customer expectations, demands, market, uh, digital transformation, et cetera. The most important thing is, I'll take a look at your own organization, what's your internal capacity to respond to change? One meaning you really suck at it, 10 meaning you're really good, you can pivot and adjust. So you take a look at what that delta or difference is between your internal capacity to change and your the external change, and that's where you, you confront reality and your ability to respond. So that's another example yeah. of the tool, but you have to confront where you are that's yeah, and, and I love that. And my favorite, yeah, my favorite, one of my favorite quotes is from uh, Jack Welch, who uh, I think lately left us. Uh, but uh, his was, you know, face reality as it is, not as it was, or how you would like it to be. And I, and that always stuck with me because so often we have these conversations where either people hearken back, or they, you know, look too far forward. You say, no, I mean, this is today and this is the situation and we have to face it and, and put all that stuff aside. So I, I think that's a critical piece. So so what's number three? So ne- uh, step three is getting into your plan design. So you've got mm-hmm. your visualization, your why, your purpose, your reason to believe. Confronted reality. Okay, this is a hard reality of where we are today. Good, bad, and ugly. And then you get into your plan design. So the key with the plan design, we use what we call a law of threes plan design. So when you're looking at, you know, let's say the next three years or even the next year, depending on your horizon for, for planning, you take a look at what are those top three things we must assess on. You can, because it's a challenge for all us as entrepreneurs and executives, we try to try to do everything. So it's mm-hmm. easy to come up with 20 things that we want to do. It's really, really, really hard to come up with the three things that we must do to grow our business. Yes. If you do 10 things, you'll execute 10% of the time. If you do three things, you have a higher chance of executing 100% of the time. So we, we work with, with through the process, work through to distilling down what are those top three things we must focus on to grow our business. And then once we do that law of three, threes of the top things we'll do over the next year to three years, then we get into the next, what are the three things under that, that, the big goals we've called them, that we need to do this year or this quarter to achieve that. So it's cascading strategy, but everything is limited to three. Three big goals Perfect. over the next three years, the three things we'll do this year to achieve that, and then the actions under there. So a law of three plan design, we find totally uh, useful. And the key is, and you know this, uh, the, the key of strategy is often what you say no to. Oh, yes. You say yes to, but you have to have that yeah. radical clarity on that. Yeah, it's always amazed me because if you do a, if you do a session like this, and I've done many over the years, or have meetings, uh, you know, going into a new year or whatever, and you say to your team, you go, you know, what are the things that we need to do this year? I, everybody has tons of ideas, right? And they'll all be open. And then if you say, okay, what are we going to stop doing? 
Exactly. And then there's silence, absolute yeah. silence. And I think, and I love this because, yeah, if you don't make, if you don't limit it and you don't, um, if you don't make, force people to make some choices, then they'll just try and do everything because people hate making choices and they hate, if I, if I don't do, if I select this, well, then I'm not selecting those three, but I want to do those three as well. So yeah, I love this piece, but yeah, s- saying no to things and stopping doing things is, is so much harder than people coming up with new things to do. Exactly right. And using that law of three plan design, I just find is just a great framework for forcing that radical clarity of focus. Mm-hmm. And then on to four. Four is de- what we would call addressing the death threats in your organization. <laughs> the death threats are those things that are often unsaid that get in the way of you executing on your strategy. So often it could be a culture thing. It mm-hmm. could be, you know, maybe some organizations are hard at holding people accountable. I mean, you can have a great strategy, but if you can't have critical yep. conversations and hold people accountable, then you won't execute the strategy. Sometimes, and we do a lot of work with larger organizations, sometimes it could be a department or an area. If that area, if that department or area is not uh, on board, they could be a gatekeeper for something or other. If they're not on board, then strategy will fail. So it's calling those things out. What are those things in, in the organization that we often don't talk about that could get in the way of us successfully executing the strategy. So those are crucial conversations at the end. Yeah, no, and I love that piece as well, because like, I think that's critical, because you're right, I mean, saying what are those what are those things that we don't talk about because we don't talk about them because we don't want to talk about <laughs> them, and, uh, and that they're awkward and they're hard, yeah, but they're the things that later on, throughout the year or when you're having problems, you are talking about them, you're just not talking about them to the people who matter. Right. You're talking about them among yourselves. You're saying yeah, we can't get it executed because of this department or this person or that or whatever. If it was um, only if it was if these guys got on board, this department got on board, yeah. then would be good. It's usually around the yeah. coffee machine where those discussions uh, uh, take place. So one thing is calling out where those challenges are mm-hmm. as a group, but more importantly, what are we going to do to remove those death threats? Yeah. And the other thing I just want to on accountability that I, I, I always love because when you when when people mention accountability, everybody is is in violent agreement. Yes, hold everybody accountable, but they normally mean hold other people accountable. <laughs> um, and accountability starts with yourself. So I think as part of this, it's a good thing to remind people that. Yes, we're going to hold people to account, but the most important thing is that you hold yourself to account first yeah. and foremost. Which leads into step five, which we call the rhythm of accountability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sounds a great lead. Yeah. Uh, so just like anything else, if, if you want to have a strategy and you want to execute it, you have to have a regular cadence of, of pulling yourselves out of the weeds, the day-to-day mm-hmm. firefighting, the day-to-day problem solving, to focus on your strategy. So we work with leadership teams and organizations to, de- to determine what's that rhythm of accountability where you're going to pull yourself out of the day-to-day grind of the day-to-day work you're doing to focus on on the business, not in the business. So we have our, the teams basically determine what that is, whether it's weekly, monthly, uh, and typically there's a week- weekly, monthly, and quarterly and annual accountability, but we help them uh, work within their own business because every business has a life cycle and, and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. We help them articulate uh, their own rhythm of accountability so they can pull themselves out of the organization to focus on what that regular cadence is. So it talks about who's going to be reporting, how they're going to do it, how often they're going to be do it, what's the form and fashion that this will be done. But they basically de- develop it themselves and that ownership is typically taken on as they develop it themselves. Yeah, and I love this because uh, it, it is so critical that, as you say, that you set up this cadence and it's agreed because otherwise it just becomes, it's hard. It's hard when you get bogged down in the business and it doesn't matter whether you're the CEO or whatever, when you get bogged down at the day to day, you will you will always push taking yourself out of it to look strategic. You'll always push that to the bottom of the pile because that seems like, yeah, it, it seems like a luxury when you're firefighting on a day-to-day. So if you haven't built it in and forced that into the process, it's always going to get pushed to the bottom. Oh, exactly right. And it, it does take discipline, though, because it's very, very seductive to get involved in day-to-day firefighting, yeah. problem solving. And it's easy to say, okay, no, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. So even even concretely, you know, when, say you have a management meeting once a month, which is very common, or whatever. So even talking about where you're going to put strategy on your agenda. Because often they say, well, we'll leave it to the end. But you you know, just as well as I do, if you leave yeah. strategy to the end of your agenda, you will never get to it. So move it up to the yeah. front of your agenda, do your quick updates, what's on track, what's not on track, what do we need to adjust, and then move forward from there. So it's simple things like that. That's why it's not complex. But if you have a process and a system in place, you can actually create and execute strategy. But that discipline is so critical. No, and I love your I love your system because what happens often, as you know, is the minute you start discussing strategy, a few strategic ideas come up, and then everybody piles straight into 
uh, problem solving and delivery before you've even decided if this is the strategy you're going to pursue because people love to get into that stuff. Exactly. Um, well, and so having been strategy and strategy and planning. So strategy is kind of, you know, getting out there and looking at, okay, these are all mm -hmm. the possibilities. Strategic planning, that's why it's called planning, is actually put the plan in how you how you do it. If you have a big goals, which often people uh, confuse goals with strategy. If you mm -hmm. have big goals, okay, we're going to grow by this percentage or we're going to get a net motor score of this percentage. That's actually not a strategy. That's a goal. That's an end state. Yeah. The strategy, the strategic plan is how the heck you're going to get there with crystal clarity on that. So it's really putting in those uh, mechanisms that, that talks about who's going to do what by when to achieve those ultimate goals. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, so um, before we finish, why don't you recap your five steps again, just for everybody? Step one, start with the why. What's that direction? What's that end state? What's that purpose or reason to believe? Step two is confronting reality. Take a look under the covers in your organization, what's working, what's not, and just get a real view on your organization. Step three is putting your plan in place. Law of three plan design, three big goals, three years, three annual goals. Really keep it confined. Uh, step four is looking at the death threats. What are those things in your organization that could get in the way of you executing your strategy? And the glue that holds it together is that rhythm of accountability. What's that cadence that you're going to pull yourself out of the day-to-day -to, -day to focus on your strategy and solely focus on the strategy for the purpose of executing? Yeah, listen, John, this has been fantastic. I think anybody listening um, or viewing will see that this is a very, very straightforward and very well thought out process. And to be honest, I believe a lot of people are going to be revisiting their strategic planning uh, yes. when we start to emerge from this, because it stands to reason that you're going to have to um, look at things through a different lens right now. So all of John's information about himself and the Envision Edge team uh, will be in his contributor bio. But before we go, John, just tell people a little bit more about yourself and your team. Yeah, so we've, uh, we have we are a small company. We have seven people on our team. Uh, all we focus on is strategy innovation. We're focused on growth, primarily mid, mid to large organizations, although we've created a strategy product, actually very timely, a do-it-yourself strategy uh, product that you can do yourself, walk through all the steps that I've talked about. There's videos, workbook. We have an online strategy tool, which is very appropriate for working virtually now. Mm -hmm. um, so that is our focus. It's on, on growing organizations using uh, strategic planning methodologies, very simple processes we can use and developing innovation practices and methodologies to grow organizations. That's what we do. Our why, our purpose and reason to believe is to help leaders and organizations do great things, whatever that definition of greatness is, that's what we do. How we do it is through executing a strategy, creating it and helping organizations innovate. That's who we are. Yeah, it's fantastic, John. This, this has been great. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. Thanks again, John, up in Canada. And we'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.